Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at solving matrix equations. We're first going to start off by reviewing how to find the inverse of a matrix since we're going to be using that today in order to solve matrix equations. So remember if I have a matrix that's defined as the matrix A, B, C, D, if I want to find the inverse of that matrix, A inverse, I have to do one over the determinant of A, which is A, D minus B, C, times a certain matrix. The way I find this matrix is by switching A and D from matrix A and then negating B and C from matrix A. So if I apply that for X here, X inverse is gonna be one over AD is five times two minus BC is negative one times three. So that's minus a negative three. That will just end up becoming plus a positive. And then in matrix X, I switch A and D. So I switch the five and the two and I negate the three and the negative one. From there, I'm going to just combine the 10 and the three down here so I get 1 13th, carry over that matrix. And the last thing I need to do is the scalar multiplication. I multiply 1 13th by every element in that matrix. So there is my answer for X inverse. Let's start looking at solving some matrix equations. One and two are nice and simple, super straightforward. So in number one, I have X minus a matrix is equal to another matrix. So in order to get X by itself, I really just need to add this matrix over to the other side. When I do that, I'll have the matrix four, negative nine, nine, plus the matrix six, six, negative two. Since these are of the same exact dimensions, I can add those and I just add the corresponding elements. Four and six is 10, negative nine and six is negative three, and nine minus two is seven. So there's the matrix X that I was solving for. Number two. If I want to solve for Y, I'm going to think of this more as adding Y over. So now I have Y on this side of the equal sign and then subtracting this column matrix over here. So in order to find the matrix Y that I'm solving for, I need to do 0, 3, 10 and subtract that matrix negative 3, negative 8, 12. Again, just like in number one, since these are matrices of the same exact dimensions, I can subtract them. So I just subtract the corresponding elements. Zero minus negative three gives me a positive three. Three minus a negative eight gives me 11. And 10 minus 12 gives me negative two. There is the matrix Y that I needed to solve for. Number three, I have two X equals this square matrix. So this says scalar multiplication of two times matrix X gives me this matrix over here. Normally when I solve an equation like this where I have two times the variable, in order to isolate this variable, I would have to divide by two to get the two to cancel out and get the X alone. That's exactly what I'm gonna do, but I can't write a matrix divided by two. So instead I write this as times a half. So I'm really just doing scalar multiplication of one half. When I do that, I'm dividing dividing or multiplying each of these elements by a half. So 16 times a half is eight. Negative 18 times a half is negative nine. Negative 20 times a half is negative 10. And negative four times a half is negative two. There's the matrix X that I was looking for. Number four, I have this matrix is equal to a square matrix times the matrix Z. In order to get this matrix Z alone, if this was just a regular equation, right, I would have to divide by this matrix to get the Z alone because I see that these things are attached by multiplication, so I need to do some kind of division. But similar to what I did over here, I can't just divide because I can't divide matrices. And since this is not scalar multiplication, this says a matrix times a matrix, I actually need to find the inverse of the square matrix in order to cancel it out and get the Z by itself. So the first thing I'm gonna do is right on the side over here is I'm gonna find the inverse to this matrix. I'm going to call this matrix matrix A and on the side over here, I'm gonna find A inverse. So I know the inverse of a matrix is equal to one over the determinant AD minus BC. In this case, that would be 10 minus zero times the square matrix here. I have to switch the two and the five and negate the other two elements. So negative one and zero. So now now for this inverse, 
1 over 10, I now need to multiply by each element inside of that matrix. I am going to reduce these fractions just to make my life easier when I'm multiplying or adding or doing whatever it is that I'm going to do over here in a second. So 5 tenths reduces to a half, negative 1 tenth doesn't reduce, 0 does not reduce, and 2 tenths reduces to 1 over 5. So now that I have this inverse, I need to figure out how I'm going to multiply in here to actually get the z alone. The thing that I need to take into account is that matrix multiplication is not commutative. So I have to take into account if I need to do a times a inverse or a inverse times a for when I'm multiplying over here. Whatever I do to one side of the equation, I also have to do to the other. I'm just going to cross out this 4 because it's kind of in the way there. And now I need to think to myself, this matrix here is a 2 by 1 matrix. This matrix here is a 2 by 2 matrix as is its inverse. So if I were to multiply a 2 by 1 matrix by a 2 by 2 matrix, I can't do that because these inner two numbers aren't the same. But if I did a 2 by 2 matrix times a 2 by 1 matrix, then the number of columns is equal to the number of rows, so I would be able to perform this multiplication. So what I need to do is multiply by A inverse on the left side of this matrix, which means I multiply by A inverse on the left side of this matrix. So now this equation reads A inverse times this column matrix is equal to A inverse times A times Z. I'm going to write out this multiplication so I can start performing that. So I have A inverse, which we just found was a half, negative 1 over 10, 0, and 1 fifth. And I'm going to multiply that by 24, 40. On the right side of this equation, A inverse times A is just the identity matrix. So that cancels each other out and I'm only left with z which is what I'm solving for. So all I have left to do here is multiply this matrix by this matrix. I'm going to start by just circling or boxing out the rows in my first matrix and I know that since I'm multiplying a 2 by 2 and a 2 by 1 that my output will be a 2 by 1 matrix. I know the matrix Z will be a two row matrix with only one column, but I'm gonna give myself a little bit of space for the arithmetic that I'm gonna need to do here. So this first element is gonna be row one and column one. So I do a half times 24, which is 12, and then negative 1 tenth times 40. So that's the same thing as 40 divided by 10. So that's gonna be a negative four. For the second row first column, I do zero times 24, that's zero. And then 1 fifth times 40, which is the same thing as 40 divided by five. So that's a plus eight. So that means the matrix Z that I was looking for is just the matrix eight, eight. Let's do a couple more examples. Number five, negative three times the matrix Z minus this column matrix is equal to this column matrix. This is way easier than number four. I just need to solve this the way I would normally solve any equation by isolating the variable. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is add this column matrix over to the other side of the equation. When I do that, this matrix will cancel out and I'll end up with negative three Z is equal to six and six is 12, negative 12 and negative three is negative 15. In order to get this Z by itself, I now need to divide by negative three, which is the same thing as multiplying by negative one third. So I'm just doing scalar multiplication now on this side. 12 times negative a third is the same thing as 12 divided by negative three, so that's negative four. And then negative 15 times negative three is going to give me positive five. So the matrix Z that I needed to solve for is just the column matrix negative four, five. Number six, same idea. In order to isolate X, I'm just going to follow the same steps that I normally would to solve an equation. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract this matrix over to the other side. So I'm going to have minus 1, 4, 1, 0, and that will get this matrix to cancel out. So I'll have 4x on the left side of the equation is equal to 21 minus 1 gives me 20, 36 minus 4 gives me 32, negative 2 minus 1 gives me negative 3, and 4 minus 0 gives me 4. Last thing I need to do is divide by 4, which is the same thing as multiplying by 1 fourth. So the matrix x is going to be 20 divided by 4 is 5, 32 divided by 4 is 8, negative 3 fourths stays a fraction, and 4 divided by 4 is 
1. Number 7, x equals 3a minus 4b when a is this matrix and b is this matrix. So in order to find x here, I'm just applying these rules. So I have scalar multiplication of 3 times matrix A minus scalar multiplication of 4 times matrix B, which is negative 1, 2, 6, negative 5. I'm going to follow across here, so I'm going to do this scalar multiplication first. 3 times 4 gives me 12, 3 times negative 2 gives me negative 6, 3 times 1 gives me 3, and negative 7 times 3 gives me negative 21. Now for the second piece, I need to either ignore the negative sign, leave it here, and then just do 4 times all of these things, or my other option is to do scalar multiplication of negative 4 times this matrix, and then just make this a plus sign, which I actually prefer that, I prefer to add, so I'm going to do scalar multiplication of negative negative 4. So negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Negative 4 times 6 is negative 24. And negative 4 times negative 5 is positive 20. So now when I add these two matrices, 12 and 4 gives me 16. Negative 6 and negative 8 gives me negative 14. 3 and negative 24 gives me negative 21. And negative 21 and 20 gives me negative 1 there is the matrix X that I was solving for. Number eight, X equals A inverse A minus 2A when A is this matrix. The first thing that I notice here is this A inverse times A. When I multiply a matrix and its inverse, I end up with the identity matrix. So rather than finding the inverse of A, multiplying those things together and getting the identity matrix, I'm just gonna skip right to writing the identity matrix because it saves me a ton of time. So remember the identity matrix is ones along the diagonal from top left to bottom right and zeros in the other spot. So A inverse times A is just the identity matrix minus 2 times A. I'm going to do this scalar multiplication first. So I'm going to carry over the identity matrix and I'm going to look at this as negative 2 times this matrix. So then this will end up being a plus. So negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. And negative 2 times positive 2 is negative 4. So now when I add these matrices together, 1 and negative 6 is negative 5. 0 and 2 is 2, 0 and negative 2 is negative 2, and 1 and negative 4 is negative 4. There is the matrix X that I was looking for. Last one for today, Z is equal to B cubed when B is the square matrix. B cubed says B times B times B. So I'm going to have to multiply three matrices together. So I'm going to write that all out first. So 4, 2, negative 1, 0 times 4, 2, negative 1, 0. And I'm actually just going to stop here and know that I'm going to then need to multiply the output matrix that I get here by 4, 2, negative 1, 0 one more time because this is B times B, and I'll need to multiply that one more time times B. First thing I'm going to do is highlight the rows in the first matrix and the columns in the second matrix. So this first element is going to be a combination of row 1 and column 1. Row 1 and column 1. 4 times 4 gives me 16. 2 times negative 1 gives me negative 2. This second element is row 1 and column 2. 4 times 2 is 8, 2 times 0 is 0. The bottom left element is row 2 and column 1. Row 2, column 1. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4, 0 times negative 1 is 0. This last element is row 2, column 2. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, 0 times 0 is 0. So this first matrix ends up being negative 4 and negative 2. So this matrix is just B times B. I need to multiply this one more time times B in order to get B cubed. So again, I'm going to circle the rows in the first matrix and the columns in the second matrix. This top left element is row 1 and column 1. 14 times 4 is 56. 8 times negative 1 is negative 8. Second element is row 1, column 2. 14 times 2 is 28. 8 times 0 is is 0. Row 2, column 1. Negative 4 times positive 4 is negative 16. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. Row 2, column 2. Negative 4 times positive 2 is negative 8. And negative 2 times 0 is 0. So the final matrix B cubed that I was looking for is 56 minus 8 
which is 48, 28 plus 0, negative 16 plus 2, and negative 8. B cubed. That's it for solving matrix equations. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Have a great day.